Welcome to my Neuralink update episode. The world's largest company, Apple, doesn't realize yet, but the fact they're playing in the virtual reality space with their Vision Pro product means they're gearing up to compete with Neuralink in the future. But before we think about how that can happen, watch this goofy video clip of someone having their brain fooled in virtual reality. But again, your brain is going to tell you that you're going to feel this as you can see, as this guy with the hammer starts gently touching the rubber hand, the guy's real hand reacts as though it's getting touched itself. Oh, it's so, it's so weird. Oof. Oh. And poof. Oh. Well, this mind trick is one of the most basic ones I can think of. But imagine what happens if you start messing with your brain with more advanced technology. Watch this video to see how fooled someone can be with these VR headsets. <laughs> No, 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 That's no, 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 it's not. You lost the bet. You You're have seriously to doing do this it. to me, Val? Yes, you have to. That's the deal. Oh, oh my gosh, come on. It's okay. Press. No. no, no, no. <laughs> what are you doing? I can't walk. I can't. Walk. Do you need help? Do you need help? Please, babe, please help. I can't okay. do this. Oh, oh my god, Val! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god, babe. Oh my god. This, again, was a goofy example. That's exaggerated. But if this is what's possible today, what is going to be possible 10 years from now? Could you trick yourself into thinking you're lying on a beach in your dream vacation spot? Or could someone force you into thinking you're in a war zone? An advanced Neuralink will have probes that are directly connected to your brain tissue. They'll be able to send electrical signals directly to the areas of your brain that make you feel, see, hear, think, or do something. Plus, will headsets from Apple, Meta, and the like actually become useful? Normal people don't want a heavy phone strapped to their face. Even if these bulky devices were to fool you into believing you're in a different world, an advanced Neuralink will directly stimulate, even manipulate your brain into believing you're in a totally different universe. And oddly enough, more people are going to sign up to be implanted with a brain chip that allows you to do this than strain their neck and look like a goof all day. This is the magic of Neuralink. They're building an actually useful device that is fully invisible and will be widely available for purchase. So the future is gonna be wild, exciting, crazy, whatever you wanna call it. And as technology advances, we're gonna be more one and the same with our digital devices. The mind tricks of today are nothing compared to the mind tricks of the future. In this update episode, I'll share a crazy breakthrough from some Japanese scientists using lab-grown stem cells to help a paralyzed man stand and then walk. Then I'll highlight work from two MIT students creating fake brain data. I'll give an update on Neuralink's second product, Blindsight, and then stick around to the end where I highlight one of Neuralink's competitors in China. This story is nuts. Watch this so I can explain how Neuralink could work with stem cells in the future in addition to their implants. Japanese scientists have achieved what was once thought impossible. A paralyzed man can now stand and is relearning to walk, something that Neuralink is working on achieving as well. But this approach was an injection of lab-grown stem cells. Stem cells are the special cells that can turn into many different kinds of cells. While skin cells protect your body, muscle cells contract, and nerve cells send signals, Stem cells don't have any specific structures or functions. They can turn into any of these cells, and the ones these researchers used were grown in a lab. After injecting them in four patients, two of them have significant growth of new tissue in the previously hollow, damaged spinal region. After a year, one patient moved from an A rating, completely paralyzed, to a D rating, where they can stand independently. Another moved from an A to a C, where E is normal mobility. The medical progress, particularly due to genetic engineering and AI advancements, are absolutely incredible. So if you want to stay on the cutting edge of this medical technology revolution, subscribe to my channel Neuropod for Neuralink updates. If you've been following, you probably know Neuralink's approach to restoring movement is different. Neuralink wants to implant two chips in the motor cortex region of the brain and two or more chips in the spinal cord to wirelessly send brain signals to the part of your body that controls your arms and legs. Having more tissue develop in that spinal region via stem cells could prove to be useful for Neuralink. 
But this is part of something bigger. Neuralink may not need any other treatments, but their shorter term company mission is to help solve any brain or spine problem. So pairing Neuralink implants with pharmaceutical drugs, psychedelic therapies, or stem cell injections are certainly possible. Despite that there's been a lot of progress, we're still in the early innings of this biotech revolution. Let's look at this post that DJ Su, the president of Neuralink, reacted to. It's another example of great work done by two MIT students. These guys read monkey brains to control robotic arms. But what's even cooler is they did the reverse as well. They use robotic arm movements to create fake brain data. And I tried this out myself. It's interesting to think about what's going up in the noggin while moving this joystick in circles and left to right back and forth. Generating synthetic brain data from robotic arm movements is like having a pretend brain to practice with. It helps other scientists and engineers build assistive devices without needing real brain data, which can be hard to get. It also lets them try new ideas and make things safer while learning more about how our brains work. Neuralink is not only gonna give us in-depth information about how our brains work, but also provide useful help to people who need it most. They're working on their second product called Blindsight, which Elon talked about less than a week ago. Neuralink has had in monkeys a working you know, device we call Blindsight, where it's been working well and monkeys are healthy for, for a few years now. And we're hoping later this year to do our first device implant for a human enabling someone who is completely blind to see. It, it, it's gonna be low res at first, like Atari graphics, you know, so I wanna set expectations appropriately. Uh, so it'll, it'll start off with like, like very low res, but then over time, I think eventually you, uh, you, the implant would enable vision that is like superhuman. I often get asked how Neuralink intends to cure blindness. The simple answer is they're first gonna implant a couple Neuralinks towards the back of your brain and connect them to an external camera. This won't cure blindness at the beginning per se, but they'll continue to improve the resolution over time. Now, I've watched a bunch of videos about this and even created a specific episode about how this visual prosthesis works. So if you wanna know more, click the link in the description. But to finish the quick summary, they'll use what that external camera sees to stimulate neurons in your visual cortex that will flash points of light. So for someone who's blind, they won't truly be able to see what the camera can see, but their brain will have enough information to navigate their environment. And this is hugely impactful for improving their quality of life. Consider just having a fuzzy view of your world versus no view. It's a big difference if you can avoid tripping over items and avoid walking into things. And this is just the beginning. They'll improve rapidly and ultimately help the blind see a lot. As Neuropod listeners know, the patient registry has been open to folks in the United States, Canada, and United Kingdom. But now it is open to the world. I should add this doesn't mean there are ongoing trials in every country, but it further demonstrates Neuralink has the aspiration to make this a product that's available around the world. They're trying to learn more about patient needs, which could differ based on geography. This also means they're working on expanding eventually into Asia as well. The Chinese government is working in collaboration with private Chinese companies to compete with Neuralink. Recently, new cyber neurotech announced they've implanted brain chips in three people, with the intention of implanting in 50 more people next year. However, this is not exactly an apples to apples comparison. They're currently working on a semi-invasive implant called the Beinao Number no. 1, with the intention of making the Beinao Number no. 2, which will be a fully wireless invasive chip like Neuralink next year. For reference, a United States-based brain-computer interface company, Synchron, whose investors include Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates, is currently in human trials with 10 patients, six in the United States and four in Australia. Again, this is also not quite an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, as Neuralink's device has a much higher ceiling in terms of potential uses down the road. Nevertheless, I support any company working to help those with unmet medical needs. I'm back to making these update videos every month instead of every quarter, so make sure to subscribe and catch the next one as soon as I release it. My name is Ryan Tanaka. Thanks for watching.